It's a desperate cry to God. You realize how vulnerable you are. Like in a moment, you realize oxygen can be gone. Life can be taken in a moment. That we are in desperate need of God. And that's where we need. We need that turbulence that draws us under the heart of God. Um, often I think about we get caught up in being uh, outer court and inner court people where outer court showing the temple, like showing people what the temple, where the temple is. Like there's the temple, there's the temple. And inner court people are just really good at doing inner court things. And, and it's very spiritual and it's, and, it, and it's worship unto God. But the veil has been opened so that we can enter into that veil. And that's where we want to be like Enoch and walk with God. We've been given the, the great privilege to walk with God, and uh, turbulence will draw you to God. Because talking about those things, talking about the inner court stuff won't matter when you're being shook. You become desperate to know God, and we need to be a people that are desperate in knowing the Lord. And so that word was hitting me a lot, Crystal. Praise God. Praise the Lord. The Lord has delivered you all from so much. It's, you all have such a heart for God and serving God. And everything he went through was all learning. It was all learning, receiving, and relationships are real. And uh, I've noticed certain things, and we all got to remember this, all of us. It don't matter if it's a preacher. It don't matter if it's a father or a mother or a friend or whoever we look up to. When their flesh comes out, don't let that hurt you with you and God. Because everybody needs Jesus, and everyone needs to be sanctified, and everyone needs to grow. That's why we need to forgive. We have to forgive. We have to learn. We have to forgive. And there's things we're learning so we don't do it, um, or we stop doing it. Um, you know, we all can be very capable of mistreating people. We can all be very capable of, of controlling and getting a hold of a, we get a hold of a vision, and we how quickly we forget and I believe God will take us in and out of situations to give us vision of what we're doing and what's happening. Because um, if we focus on changing others, we'll go crazy. We got to let God change us. This is why when we, when we go to God and we bring things, nine times out of ten, God changes us because that's how the relationship works. He's working on people. He's working on things. But where he's bringing you all, wow. Wow, that was, a, that was a powerful word. Amen? Yeah, there's, we have got to grow into being a people like uh, uh, where we are pressing into God. Where we are getting to know him. I, I, do, I do believe this too. I believe this for a while. But I believe we're in a season where we're seeing things happen and change so much. And uh, things are shaking. You know, the comfortabilities we had at one time, all that can change so fast. And it's so important that we are learning how to press into God. You know, I was even this morning, so I haven't like, been coming up and hugging people today because I'm really sick. And uh, even in that, I'm still getting up and spending time with the Lord. I'm still, I may have to crawl, but I'm crawling to Him and spending time with Him. And it's so important that we develop that. And, and I was reading in Jeremiah the other morning, never to do it out of obligation, but out of a heart for the Lord. Amen. We got to be careful that we don't do things. Of, this is what uh, Aaron's two sons did. They were laying the fire in the, in the Holy of Holies out of obligation. And they died. They died. They, they made light of what was holy. We never want to uh, uh, surrender that time, this freedom that we've been given to spend time with God. And, and anyways, I'm so glad I did. I'm so glad that I didn't uh, shake it off and just be like, oh, I'm not going to do that. I'm glad I did it. Because even this morning, God started showing me as I'm pressing into Romans, going through this book of Romans. Uh, I'm learning so much that I've never known before. A lot of stuff I realized I just learned from others or what I've heard. And you just hear things so much. That's what becomes things. And um, but as I'm going through the word, God is just starting to show me who he is. And I'm starting to know him through his word. And it's so important that we are a people of the word of God. It's so important that we are in his word. Because there are things that will look like the word. Remember, Satan comes as an angel of light. It will look good. When, uh, I don't know where Jackson went. He must have went down with Crystal. When we were down in New Orleans, 
Uh, I was over with the main group, the main group on Bourbon Street. We had, uh, they set up this, um, like a cross and they got speakers and they got these, um, like kind of like this, like they'll have these posters that they, I mean, man, they, within five minutes, they set up this whole thing and it got scripture and everything. That's kind of the main area where they're witnessing and doing everything. Well, Jackson and one of our, one of the guys from TC disappeared. I was like, oh, I should go find them. And then kind of forgot about it, got into what I was doing. Well, something rose up and it kept getting thick and thick and thick. And I was like, you better go find them. You better go find them. You better go find them. And so I was like, all right, I'm going to go on a journey and find these guys. I walked, and they were only like a half block down one way. And there they are talking to this guy that's got like, um, he's got this head thing on and a like cloak. And he's got this whole thing. He's got his tail with this crystal ball and all. And I realized he's a, a mystic doing fortunes and all that. And they're talking to him. And he's bringing a lot of confusion. Uh, he was claiming he's a Christian psychic. And so he was trying to talk about how he does angel boards and uh, angel cards instead of tarot cards. And he's, he's got an answer. Like, so instead of communing with the dead, he's communing with your angel to tell you, you know, your purpose and your meaning. And Because people are looking for who am I? Who am I in this life? And so he's getting access in. And he's probably learned this because... Probably many people, he probably tries to approach saying, oh, I'm a Christian, and then, then he's like, oh, okay, loses money, right? They get money, they're getting paid to do this, and so if he starts busting out an angel board, well, now, yeah, now you're like, oh, maybe it's okay. And so anyways, I'm sitting there, I come up, and he's trying to confuse them, and so the Lord starts rising up in me to start asking him questions. And I felt like, don't get into, like, uh, um, trying to answer stuff that he's asking me. Ask him questions. I, I just knew it was the Lord. It was the Holy Spirit protecting me. Take that away. I would have just been dumb, and he would have spoke to me, and I would have been all confused. Because that, apart from God, I don't hurt. Apart from God, I was just doing drugs and going to die. That was me. So God, and it was God moving on me. His Spirit was on me. And so I just kept asking him questions, and he was trying to explain how he's, he has the Holy Spirit in him, but not the Holy Spirit like the New Testament, the true Holy Spirit. He said, so from the beginning, that hovered over the earth, and, and, he's, and he's laying out all the Genesis, and like really crafty. It's really crafty how he was saying all these things. But then as the Lord was giving me these questions, I know it was the Lord, because I wouldn't even thought of this. But the questions I was asking, all of a sudden he started stuttering, and he didn't know what to say, and I knew he was getting all... You know, he got frustrated. Then he turns around and he starts trying to like prophesy over me or, or however he would say it through his thing. And, and I had to kind of block that, not let that sink in because I knew that he was just trying to shift it back to that. But anyways, why am I saying this is because it was very deceptive. It was very spiritual and it was very deceptive. And if I wasn't a person of the word, the moment he said Holy Spirit, I would have been like, okay, we're cool, we're friends, we're brothers, or this is good. And it brought me back to when I was first saved. I never, you know, I didn't even know who the Mormons were, never, never really encountered them. And I'm a brand new Christian, I'm reading my Bible, and I'm trying to figure this out. These two guys show up at my door, you know, they got their white shirts on, they got their little badges, and uh, it was like, uh, uh, Fox Elder or something, but, you know, they had these names, I don't know, it was different, but... But, but, but it had Jesus Christ on it. So I remember as a brand new Christian, like, oh, they must be cool. They're Jesus, you know? And, like, and so we're talking, but I'm figuring it out as we're talking. You know, and then I, apparently I was scared. You know, I, like, I was like, you know, I didn't know no better. I'm like, come on in, you know? And, and I was sitting there like, hold on, I got this worship. These guys are I'm crying out in tongues. And I think I scared them. Um, <laughs> but, I didn't, but I didn't know them. But I, I, I was seeking the word. And as I'm seeking the word, as they talk to me, they're not lining up with the word anymore. So just bringing up a couple of these things, I believe time is going to get very deceptive. Many churches, the flag of Jesus has come down and a new flag is up. Mm. Rainbows and, and other various colors and other various titles that have nothing to do with Jesus anymore. It's, a, it's been overtaken. The enemy came in and conquered and took it. And the people are still inner court people serving and doing their, you know, they're probably still doing communion and they're probably still doing offerings and they're still greet, meet and greet and they're doing all their things. But the Holy Spirit isn't even there. They've been deceived. There's so much deception going on. 
people are getting further and further. We must be in the word of God so that we can withstand the storms. Because we, we abide in Christ and we abide in his word. We abide in his truth. Because things, things come in that look good. Things come in that feel good. I've been thoroughly convinced that how the enemy deceives people primarily is with your feelings. Because if it feels good, it must be right. And then therefore you start going with it. And I started thinking about this, like, uh, one of the things that we can be in danger of is signs, wonders, and miracles. And I love signs, wonders, and miracles. I love seeing deliverance. I love seeing healing. And I love seeing all this. But one of the biggest dangers is if we seek that instead of seeking God, what happens if God is in a season where he says, hey, I ain't doing that right now. And then all of a sudden, he, you, you're a part of something that he ain't doing. And then you're going away from him. And you're going to get tricked. You're going to get bamboozled. You're going to get pulled into the wrong thing because he's not even about it. And this is why we must be clinging to him. So that we're lined up with what he is doing and with what God is doing. I remember when I learned this the hard way, when I used to try to force what I believe upon people, when I would try to force it. And what I mean by it is that I was just trying to make them believe. I was trying to make them believe what I already knew, what I already saw. And all of a sudden I started learning in this relationship, when the words weren't coming forth the way they were supposed to, when the uh, um, anointing wasn't moving forward and I was like what is going on and I found myself in my flesh I started realizing oh maybe God's not talking to them and that started to hit me really heavy where I had to learn to get lined up with the spirit to be led by the spirit because when I'm led by the spirit power, joy, there's life that starts to flow out there's wisdom that I don't have it's his wisdom starts to go on and people get touched we, I really believe that we're in a time. Remember, you know, talking about end times, it says this false prophet's going to perform signs, wonders, and miracles. And people are going to be swayed by it. That's what their focus is going to be. They're going to look at that and they're going to say, therefore, it must be true because we see that. But he didn't say to believe it because of that. He said to look for the fruit, to look for the love. That's the thing we need to look for is it says you'll know by the love they have for one another. You know, it's Christ that has the power to get the gossip out of us, to get the lies out of us, to get this deception, the hatred. We're heading into times where it's so much easier to hate one another. And we need God to start raising up true love. Then there's this false version of love. And this is why I'm saying it's difficult times when we're learning to navigate. And it's God's word that we cling to. And it makes sense to me because if you look through history and you look at other countries, wherever the enemy gets a stronghold, he gets rid of the word. He tries to get the word out of there. He tries to get the Bible gone. He tries to get that word that we cling to. I was uh, uh, watching a movie yesterday. It was uh, uh, a good old Pure Flix. Um, I laugh because the Pure Flix movies, it's like the same 10 actors that shuffle. <laughs> if you notice, they shuffle. Anyone else notice that? They just shuffle. Like they just play a different role, but it's the same ones. So I'm like, oh yeah, they're just like, no. uh, it's funny to me. But, I, but you know what? I, as funny as it is, I always feel good after I watch those. You know, it's, but I, I just love how they're always shuffling around. But anyways, uh, um, was was watching um, one of them yesterday, and uh, oh, where was I going with that? I got too too laughing about all the different actors. Oh man. Anyways, it'll come back. Oh. Um, anyways, the the end times. It's. Very deceptive, false prophet, gonna bring signs, wonders, miracles, all these things. We have to be on guard. It's about loving one another, about growing in the word. Oh, that's what I was trying to talk about. So, so he, this guy, it's uh, the whole point of this movie is he finally gets saved. And when he gets saved, he ends up in jail because it's like the end times and it's like illegal to be a Christian. And he's sitting in this jail, and this guy, a guard, comes up and gives him food, but he gives him this weird look. And, and you realize he's like trying to tell him something without telling him something like he's like and so then he opens up his biscuit or whatever it is and then there's a piece of paper and he unfolds it in scripture hmm. that hit me because I eat of this every day I'm going through Jeremiah right now in the mornings and I'm memorizing Romans and I, I'm doing my best to be in this and obviously I could be in it more and I could be in it less and but it hit me how I got the whole thing, and here's you know a scene where someone's so grateful they're just getting to read uh, a page, you know, and uh, 
There's many, many people that don't even read a page today. You know? Um, but we need this word. And turbulence will cause you to see your need. Because like you said, there was nothing to grab onto. That woo feeling is one of the worst feelings ever because you realize it just, oh yeah, I'm in a plane. And then when I, if I go down, it's, I ain't going to make it. <laughs> you know, you realize you really, we really are in need of God. And so anyways, I appreciate that. Uh, before, I, before I go into this, this the, uh, chapter, I also want to say, you know, I was looking at this while we were worshiping, and I kept thinking about it, and it hits me hard because throughout the years, you know, knowing Jeremy and knowing Tabitha for a long time, and I remember when Jeremy got vision of this and put this together, and, and when I read this, I always think of the things that Jeremy's done, and I mean, this is what he does, empower and equipping the body of Christ to engage this generation with the gospel, and we need to be empowered, and we need to be equipped. And we're coming together to be encouraged to be in the word, to be with God, to be built up, to be strengthened, to reach the lost. If we're not being used to reach the lost, then God would just take us home. Because this isn't what he has for us. This is temporary. No. We forget that. No. And so we want to be built up to reach those around us. Amen. Amen. And so it's really good. And I believe, and I believe primarily one of the main ways that God uses me, uses me in two ways, I believe, that at least that I picked up throughout the years. You know, you when you follow God, you start to pick up on things. You see themes in yourself of what you do. You're like, okay, maybe that's how God uses me. You know, obviously exhorting people, building people up, trying to build them up. And always trying to, uh, through example, encourage others to get in the word of God. It's just something, God. I believe if he didn't get me in the word of God the way I did, I would have lost my mind. I was one of those people that, that I was literally losing my mind. I was going crazy. I was absolutely out of my mind, no peace. Um, scenarios going on in my mind was just, it was out of control, but his word has given me peace. His word has caused me to believe him. His word has caused me to look to him and, and to grow. And, and that's the thing is this, when you're, not, when you're not of Christ and you don't have Christ, that's why the word when we say, are you a Christian, it tends to bring confusion because so many people say, I'm a Christian, but does Christ dwell in you? Is Christ inside of your heart? Is God inside of you? Are you born again? Do you have God? Because once you get those things, this word is no longer information that we read, acknowledge, and apply. That's part of it, but it becomes literally uh, uh, God's avenue of breathing into us. It becomes God's way of speaking into us. And here's why I believe it. I believe we live in a matrix. I believe we live in a matrix where the enemy and the flesh is so, there's so many lies and deceptions of what we think life's about. And the word cuts through and brings truth to us. It shows us who we are, who God is, what the meaning of life is, what the purpose of life is. It just, and that's why when all of a sudden we get this, we get to us, uh, all of a sudden it's just like, uh, the word breaks through and we just get it and we just completely start changing because we come into truth. Yeah. We start coming into the truth and the truth sets us free. Of so anyways, I'll continue to do my best with those two things and whatever else God has me do. And look, it's not always easy. There's times where, where, where I get emotional. I get an attitude. I get, I get, you know, life is hard sometimes. And there's times where I'm like, I don't want to talk to anyone. I don't want to be around anyone. I don't want to do this. I don't. But then all of a sudden the gifting rises up and just want to pour out onto others. I just start seeing others. I see that incorruptible seed in my brother or in my sister that God planted in them. And I want to grow it. I want to see it grow. I want to see it flourish. I want to see Christ get glory. And, and, and just starts to rise me up. Amen. And I want all of us to continue to grow in, uh, in this season that we're in. And so, if turbulence comes, our spirit's praising God. Our flesh don't like it. Our flesh don't like it at all. Our flesh does not like discomfort. But our spirit, man, is crying out, Jesus, do whatever it is that you want to do. Because whatever he wants to do is good. Um, Romans 15, I have two 